Hi everyone, welcome back to my craft room. If you're new to my craft room, then welcome. Today I am working on these cross projects here. I picked these up a while ago at the Dollar Tree. Um, they're really pretty wood crosses that they have in the crafter square section. Um, here is the number for that one if you want to pause and get that number for to see if you can find them. And then I picked up this one. I absolutely love the design on this one. It's so pretty. And here is the number for that guy. Hopefully it's focusing in here. I can't see. All right. So, like I said, just pause the video there for a second if you want to get those numbers. So what I want to do is I want to paint these. And, of course, my favorite thing to do is decoupage. So I have some really pretty napkins here that I want to put on here. I wanted to get these done before Easter. I'm just making it here. But I also want them so, you know, they're not just for Easter time. Um, of course, you could leave it up even if it was. But I figured I would do one with these beautiful flowers and butterfly napkin. Um, and this one I'm going to paint the cross with the white Adirondack paint. And everybody always asks if you have to paint it with paint first. No, you don't. But um, it really brings out the color of the napkin so much brighter if you have a nice white color like the background of the napkin. And this napkin here, this was sent to me from a subscriber. Um, this other butterfly napkin I believe came from Amazon. They have some real pretty napkins, but you can find napkins anywhere, grocery store. Um, you can order just like a couple on Etsy or eBay or something like that, but there's tons of beautiful napkins out there. Um, this one was sent to me, like I said, and this one has like more of an, I don't know, almost like a beige background. So I'm going to use this Bavarian color, and I think that'll blend in a little bit better on the background for this one. But I'm just going to be using some home decor chalk paint, whatever color you think would match best. Um, I could do this in a white because I'm going to cover the whole napkin, but I think I'm going to stick with that color of the background a little more. So that is what I'm going to do for that. And then for this one, you don't really have to cut out a lot of the napkin. I just cut because this is going to get fitted on here like so. And then when we're all said and done and it's dry, we just sand around the edges. And I'll show you guys if you haven't seen me do that before. I'm going to be using this on here, and then I'm going to piece this other piece down here on the bottom. And I just thought these daffodils would be just beautiful for spring on this cross. So that's what I'm going to do with that one. And of course, you're going to want to get your napkins apart, um, whether it's a two-ply, three-ply. Uh, you need to get those other extra layers off of there. Sometimes it's easy. And let's see if this one's going to give me a hard time. And sometimes it's not so easy. There we go. But usually you can peel them right apart at a corner. Um, there we go. Just so you get the other two plies off. That way when you decoupage, the Mod Podge goes right through and you don't have to worry about putting any down first and getting your napkins stuck or whatever. So you just want to work with the one ply. And then these I save over here clean up some messes or whatever. So this is the one I'm going to use on here. I'm just going to kind of figure out where this is going to lay the best on here to get the most of the pattern. I really want to get this butterfly down here, so I'm thinking right about there. And then that'll get some of the other butterflies in there too, and then it'll be really pretty up the center. So I'm going to take off my little stickers here. And if they're a little rough, you can sand them. These actually aren't that bad, and I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to be going around the edges anyhow. So let me put this aside before I mess it up. And um, then you're going to pop the little strings off too. I'm not going to be using this jute string. It's just a little too thick, and I don't want it to um, hang quite this way. I want to be able to put a loop in it so it hangs nice like this. So I think I'm just going to use some white twine or something on this when I'm finished. Not that the jute isn't wonderful, and you know, if you like the jute better, well then you just keep that. But I kind of wanted to put a little different color, maybe white. I'm not sure. We'll see how they look when they're done. Maybe we can use a pretty color. I don't know. But they had a lot of really nice twine and stuff at Dollar Tree that I picked up. So I figured I could do it any color, really. All right, so you're going to need a brush and something to pour the paint into. Let's see, let me find my little trays here. So this one here, I'm going to actually take it out of this one because this one's almost empty. This is the same thing. This one's getting pretty low, too. I did get some more of this. Um, let me get some of this out here, guys. It's really 
getting down the bottom here. Come on. But I'm just going to do a little bit of this because you guys know how to put paint onto a piece of wood. But I just kind of want to show you the colors. I'm going to grab another one of my little trays. These are my little trays that I get in the party section at Dollar Tray. All right, that lid did not want to come off. Okay, so let me get some of this paint in here. Yeah, man, everything's real thick here today. All right, let me just get some of this out here just so I can show you the difference. I love this white Adirondack paint. It's such a pretty bright, bright white. So I am just going to paint this whole thing. I'm probably going to give it two coats. We'll see how it comes out. I may only need one on the front with the napkin going on there. I don't know. Let's see if it's going to be bright enough. But then you're going to want to just get around all your edges really good and whatnot. Just all the way around. And then once this front dries, then I'll go ahead and I'll put a coat on the back too. Um, but I think I may be able to get away with one on this. It's actually covering it pretty well. And since I'm not having like any open spaces here with this napkin, um, I think one coat's going to be just fine. So I'll finish painting that up with the white, and then I'll show you the difference here of the um, Bavarian color. Oh, I need another brush. It's kind of a, it's not really a yellow, it's, I don't know. But I fear this is going to match much better with the background of this napkin. I think that's going to work out perfect. So this one, I'm just going to do the same thing, paint all of it, and I think I'm only going to need one coat on here, too. Sometimes some of this wood really soaks it in, but this is actually looking pretty good. I just want to get around my edges real nice here. And that will be that. There we go. I just want to make sure you smooth out all your little lumps on the front if you get any around the edges, so you don't have to deal with that while you're trying to decoupage. I'll just go over the back when I'm done. But that's it. That's the colors. I'm going to paint this, and we'll see when this dries. It looks like it might be soaking in a little bit. Um, I may end up putting two coats on the front here, but I think this one's going to be fine since this is not a white white um, with just the one coat. So I'm going to get these painted up and let them dry, and then we can come back and start putting on the napkins. Okay, these are both nice and dry. Um, this one I just did the one coat, and that turned out just fine for this. Um, the white one I did do the two coats on here because it just it didn't cover very well after it dried. You could really, it was dark in different spots. So I did two coats on that, so I'm going to leave that over here to dry a little bit more. So now on this one, I'm going to use this napkin here. And these were sent to me, like I said, so I'm not sure where these came from. But if you search around, you can find so many pretty napkins. So I want to get this whole image on here, and that's why I like this one, because it has a big image, just like the one with the butterflies. It's just going to work out really well. So I'm going to try to position this so it covers up most of this. And I may have to end up, uh, add a little leaf or something on that end, and I want these stems off to the side so it doesn't look like it's, you know, just cut off. But I think this is going to look great. So I'm using the Gloss Mod Podge. You can get this at Dollar Tree or Michael's or just about anywhere, you know, craft store. Um, so I'm going to leave this all in one big piece. And then after this dries, I'm going to make little cuts in here so it'll be easier to trim off. But um, you can just leave this in one big piece. So I am just going to hopefully get this to go on here nicely without too many wrinkles. And... It is, like I always say, it is much easier to work with smaller pieces, but since this print is so large, I didn't want to cut it into sections. I think this is going to go on pretty easy. I always like when things go on pretty easy. Try to get it to smooth out here. I know a lot of people are always telling me to use this, you know, you can use like saran wrap or plastic wrap to 
kind of smooth these out. I haven't had any luck with that. I know some people it works great for, but I just kind of just keep going over it with a lot of Mod Podge here and, you know, work out the wrinkles best I can. Um, I mean, if that works for you, great. I just have not had luck with that. So I just make sure there's lots of Mod Podge on here and then just keep working it around. I'll try to go straight out here to get this napkin to go straight. And then after I'm done, I always like to get my brush strokes all going in the same direction. My birds are very loud in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear them today, but it's springtime and they're all a little kooky. Because it's, you know, it's just what they do. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So now what I want to do, let me get my brush strokes. Make sure you're all on these edges. You want to make sure that you got it really glued down towards the edges so when you go back into, you know, sand them, that one's already coming off, to sand them off that, you know, they don't pull up from the edge. All right, so that's good for this piece. I'm just going to take this, and I'm not sure exactly, I should have done this. I know I want, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and easier to work with. I'm just going to tear some of that off. Alright. Because I want this flower here to kind of meet with this flower. And I think that should look good. There, I think that would be perfect when it dries. Let's hope. Probably should have got some of that lettering off. I don't know. I think it'll be alright. I have nowhere to hold this. I just find it easier to go down the center, the biggest part, and then kind of smooth the rest of it out. Alright, I think that went on very well. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't cut some of that lettering off, but I think it'll blend in pretty good. Because there is some up here and different places. Alright, so I'm going to put this one aside, let this dry. If I don't pull the napkin off of it. Just stick this guy over here. Okay, now for the white one, I'm just going to find, I'm not sure exactly what section I want yet, and I'm going to tear some of it off, and I'm hoping that this is all going to go on in one nice piece. So let's see, I'm going to start down here at the bottom, and I want to get these butterflies all on here, like so. To see where your pattern's going to be. I really wanted the butterflies to all go up the center here. So I think that'll work out pretty good. So I'm going to cut some of this excess off just to make my life a little bit easier here. Um, not too much of it. Just a little easier than working with a giant sheet of napkin. Some of the butterflies there too. Alright, I think that's good right there. So you can smore this excess off. Just so I'm not dragging it around here while I'm trying to do this. Okay. So I'm just going to put that down here. My little hole so I can tell where the center is. Butterfly centered up there. And I think that is going to do it. So I'm just going to start back up here on the top again. And try to turn this so you guys can see a little better. 
without moving my napkin. There we go. And hopefully this one's going to go on as nice and easy as the other one did. Let's hope. So far, so good. There we go. It's hard to see, <coughs> excuse me, it's hard to see the cross through it here. Just working out some of those little creases I saw. All right, that side looks good. Let's turn this around this way. <clears throat> Hopefully, I'm going to go straight out here. Now, some of these that have like a lot of ink on them, it takes a little bit more pressure here and you know it takes a little more to soak through as it does on some of the napkins that don't have a lot of saturated print. So I just want to make sure that soaks through good. And I think it'll be good. And there's a big bubble there and you gotta be really careful. Not a bubble but like a crease. You be very very gentle when you try to straighten them out. You don't want to really tug on that at all. There we go. Somebody's playing some loud music outside as they're driving around. Very loud. <laughs> Just some young fella having a good old time in his car. It's a nice day out today. Alright. It's actually coming out very well. So now the only thing I gotta do now, guys, is we gotta just wait for these to dry. And you see a few little creases here and there, but most of the time, once you know the uh, Mod Podge dries, it kinda flattens out. Um, just wanna make sure you don't have any really big like creases or bubbles underneath. But little tiny ones usually do just kind of flatten out. Sometimes you got to figure out which way they want to go. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to leave these be now, and I'm going to let them dry. Then we can come back and sand these off. And if you wanted to, you could put like a little border around them. I don't think I'm going to on these because I think they're going to be just fine without anything because there's so much print on this. So let me go ahead and let these dry, and then we'll be back and finish up. Okay, these are all good and dry now. I actually went ahead and started taking some of the excess off here, but I want to show you guys how I do that. It's so simple and it makes a perfect edge. Um, I actually cut off some of the excess just to get it out of the way. You don't really need to, but sometimes it's just easier to work with if you cut off some of these extra pieces. <clears throat> Then all you're going to need is a file, if you have like a regular file, but I use a nail file and I like the, um, these are just from Dollar Tree, they're kind of like a spongy kind of file, which is great to get around in some of these little curves and things, um, but whatever you have to use, whether it's a regular file or a nail file, but I find these to be the easiest to work with, and you can get, I think these were in a two pack or a three pack at Dollar Tree, I don't remember, I have a couple of these laying around. So anyway, this is all the excess that was on there. I cut most of it off. 
to get it out of my way. And then you're just going to take your file and you want to go, you don't want to go over top of your image much. You kind of want to pull it straight down. And if you don't want to hear this awful noise, hold your ears now. Um, and then you just scrape this straight down like that. And it makes a perfect edge. But you don't want to go over too much or you'll, you know, to pull off your image. You just kind of want to go right down the edge of this like that. And that's it. It all comes off. And I absolutely love this one. I actually love them both. So I did all that one off camera. And I don't think it needs anything added to it. You could add like a bow to this if you want to or something pretty. But I'm just going to leave these just the way they are. Um, I did the same thing with this. I already cut some of this out of my way. And I'm just going to go down your edges and cut that off. That's why you don't have to cut, the, you don't have to have these cut perfectly when you're decoupaging them on there because this is just so much easier to do when you're done than to try to fit a piece on there when you're trying to decoupage because it comes off so nice and easy. And there you go. And then you have your perfect little edge. So now you're going to need something to poke your hole again. Um, I have this little tool here. Not sure what it's called. One of my lovely subscribers sent this to me a couple years ago. Um, and it has like a little bead reamer on here and then the little tweezers on the end. But this little tool comes in so handy. But, you know, if you have like a pen or something too, you could use. I just need to find my hole here and kind of get the um, paper away so I can get my string through. Now I'm going to use, I, like I said, I didn't want to use that uh, jute string, so there we go. Or you don't, you could actually fill the hole in if you don't want a hole at all and attach something on the back to hang it too if you want. But I'm just going to use that hole and hang it back up. I have this stuff, I believe I got this at Hobby Lobby, and it's just number eight um, crochet cotton. And it's a nice thick size. I like using these for tags and all kinds of different things, you know, to hang on your little tags and things that you would hang off of gifts and stuff. And little ornaments and stuff too. This is just a great size, and um, you get a lot of this on here. I don't even know how much is on here, but you get quite a bit. Uh, 120 yards, actually. There you go. But yeah, this is what I'm going to use for this. I just thought it would look nicer with the pretty weights and things here. So I just cut a long piece. This is going to be way too long, but I don't know which way do I want this to go through. Do I want that to come up over the top. Or do I want that in the back? I think I want this in the front. Let's see. So I'm just going to double it and try to get it through this hole. Hopefully it's going to go right through. There we go. Look at that. So let's see. Do I want this going this way? I just put it right through that loop there. And I just pull it. Yes, that's how I want it. So it'll be like kind of towards the back. And I think that'll look nicer than that. Uh, jute on this project, and I don't want this really long, just enough to hang it. So I'm just going to tie a knot in here. I think that'll be good right there. Give it a good tug, and we'll just cut off the extra, and that will be my little hanger. Actually, I think I should have put that in the back. You know, I'm going to do this over. I don't like that. So we're going to put it through the front instead. <coughs> or is that how we did it before? Let's put it through the back. No, we put it through the, I put it through the back. Okay, we're going to put it through the front. I'm always changing my mind, so your loop will come out the back. And then. Yeah, I like that better. Then that little end will be in the back. All right, so that's how that's going to go. And then that will be it. You could always use, you know, like a decorative ribbon or something, too. But I just don't really want the, the string to be so noticeable. You know, I just want the cross to be noticeable. So let me do this one, too, real quick. And then we'll hang these up, and I'll take a nice picture of these. And, uh, yeah. This is a real easy project. It took a little time, you know, just drying time with the paint and the... Mod Podge and stuff, but other than that, it's a very easy project. I think the hardest thing was picking out which napkin I wanted to use. Alright.
right, so I'm just going to tie a knot in this one. Whoops, maybe. There we go. And that's it. All right, so that is it for this project. I'm going to hang these up. I'll take a picture of them hanging, and I'll put that at the end of this video here. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this project. I will see you guys all next time. Have a great day, everybody.